Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about vitamin K and heart health. For those of you who don't know me, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Rothenstein. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I specialize in heart disease prevention and management through science-based nutrition. It's important that whichever diet that you choose to follow or lifestyle of eating, I want to make sure that you are getting all of the nutrients through food in order to opt for optimal heart health. Today, I want to take a closer look into vitamin K and explain to you the different types, why they're both important, and why I would recommend to focus on getting these through food versus taking a supplement only as necessary, um, given that when we eat it through food, our body metabolizes it better, and it's much less of a risk for toxicity, which can cause impairments in both of the way vitamin K actually is utilized in the body. So vitamin K, it, there's two forms. There's vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. Vitamin K1 is involved in the blood clotting process. It helps to form a blood clot or create the proteins and help the proteins be formed, the blood clotting factor proteins, to help with stopping a from bleeding. So it prevents excessive bleeding, which is very important. Um, in rare conditions or in toxic levels of vitamin K, it can actually cause a lot more blood clotting to happen, and that can lead to thrombosis, blockages in the arteries that can lead to a heart attack. That's very rare when we eat it through food, but when you take excessive amounts through supplementation, that can be a risk factor, especially if you have a lot of risk, um, you know, blood clotting risk factors or disorders that don't allow that to take place. It also can happen if you're taking specific medications, particularly if you're having very high doses of vitamin K and you're on warfarin, which is an anticoagulant, and the dosage is not being titrated efficiently. Um, but that usually happens primarily through supplementation, not through food. And vitamin K1 is found in your green leafy vegetables from anything from your spinach, your Swiss chard, your kale, your broccoli, your Brussels sprouts, kiwi. It's very high in these foods. And if you are on warfarin, it's not a matter of removing these foods. We actually want you to consume them. There's other essential nutrients found in these foods. But if you're on warfarin, it should be at a consistent level in order for your body to make sure that we're titrating that vitamin K intake with your medication and closely monitoring your INR levels. The other form of vitamin K, K is vitamin K2, and that helps with arterial calcification. So what I mean by that is when you have calcium and vitamin D, um, your body needs the vitamin K2 to help facilitate it into the bone. And if we don't have that, it can cause more of the calcium to be in the arteries leading to more arterial calcification. So oftentimes you'll see supplements with vitamin D and K2. Um, the dosage of K2 will depend on what else you're eating it will depend on your medical history, the other medications you're on. So you, if you are taking vitamin D and a K2 supplement, you just want to make sure that it is an okay dosage for you. And I would recommend speaking with your healthcare team, including a registered dietitian who specializes in heart health. But we need, vitamin K2 is found primarily in fermented foods like natto, which is a fermented soybean or a sauerkraut. And it's found in, a, in some pasture-raised eggs as well in smaller quantities. Um, so sometimes a supplement may be needed, but the dosage will be dependent upon your personalized case. And you'd want to speak with your healthcare team to make sure that it's personalized to you to avoid toxic levels. But we want vitamin K1 and vitamin K2 in the diet in order to protect our bone health, our heart health, um, and make sure that we're getting the, this essential nutrients for optimal blood clotting factors um, in order for us to avoid excessive bleeding, which is also a indirect component of cardiovascular wellness as well. I want to um, invite you to read my blog post about vitamin K2 and heart health for some more information. I also want to invite you to join my email list for more information about heart disease prevention through science-based nutrition. You can access all of this on my website at entirelynourished.com. Until next time, I want to wish you a great day. And if I can help support you in any way, feel free to reach out. Feel free to browse my website for supporting services. Have a wonderful day and we'll talk again soon.